Good morning, Europe. It's Wednesday, the 4th of May. I'm Ral San. It's great to have you with us. Let's take a look at our top stories. The first civilians evacuated from the besieged Ukrainian city of Mariupol reached safety after two months below ground under Russian attack. Protests continue outside the U.S. Supreme Court over reports it plans to curtail abortion law. Vice President Kamala Harris says women's rights in America are under attack. And Liverpool are through to the Champions League final after beating Villarreal 3-2, their third Champions League final in five seasons under Jurgen Klopp. Russian troops have intensified their offensive against the Azovstal steel plant, the Ukrainian resistance's last stronghold in the devastated city of Mariupol. This after the first evacuation of civilians was completed. According to the UN, 159 displaced people have arrived in Zaporizhia, 101 of them from Azovstal and 58 who joined the convoy from the outskirts of Mariupol. It is believed that around 200 civilians are still trapped in the tunnels and bunkers of the plant. It was scary because they were constantly shelling us and during the daytime and night. The kids did not sleep. They were crying. They did not stop shelling. It was very scary. Frankly, we thought we would not get out of there. It was successful. I am, however, um, worried that not all of the civilians uh, are out. Um, the steel plant is very uh, big. Uh, it's, it was very difficult for those who came out to come out, um, and uh, I think some of them were very afraid. According to Ukrainian officials, the Russian army has multiplied its attacks. 21 people are believed to have died in Donetsk. Strikes also took place in Lviv, near the Polish border, where two people were wounded after various power stations were targeted. The strikes targeted three substations. As a result, there are interruptions to electricity supplies, two people were injured, they are receiving medical help. Ukrainian authorities have also informed of attacks against a facility in Transcarpathia and at least half a dozen railway stations around the country. The focus of the war in Ukraine has once again turned to human rights. Several groups have documented violations allegedly committed in Ukraine by Russian forces. Human Rights Watch is investigating cases in Chernihiv, Kharkiv and the Kyiv region. Experts in Chernihiv are examining some of the bodies left behind by Russian troops. Yes, on the territories that were occupied by Russian troops, we found people who died and have signs of torture. We could see a lot of cases where the hands and or legs were tied with ropes or scotch tape or cable, subsequently being shot with a machine gun, so it's clear they were executed, either shot in the head or from a small distance with a machine gun. In some places, the investigation is slow going, such as in this village close to Chernihiv, where officials are removing mines and explosives so they can search for victims. They went for the girls. There were rumors here one girl was actually complaining to their chief. And this guy gave them a hard time then. They stole everything in the village. Killed piglets, cut chicken, looted. They did so many terrible things. As the war in Ukraine continues, with no immediate end in sight, it may be a long time before what is happening on the ground comes to light. A dictator with foolish troops. This is the way Joe Biden has betrayed Russian President Vladimir Putin and his army during a visit to a factory in Alabama that produces weapons used by the Ukrainian forces. 
The U.S. president, who is pressing the Congress to pass a 31 billion euro Ukraine aid package, praised the workers and charged against his Russian counterpart. You're allowing the Ukrainians to defend themselves. And quite frankly, they're making fools of the Russian military in many instances. Because if you don't stand up to dictators, history has shown us they keep coming. They keep coming. Their appetite for power continues to grow. On the other hand, the Russian president blamed Ukraine's allies for the escalation. In a phone call with French President Emmanuel Macron, he demanded the West stop providing weapons, but also to exert what the Kremlin described in a statement as appropriate influence on Kyiv to put an end to the conflict. Pope Francis has told an Italian newspaper he had offered to meet with Russian President Vladimir Putin in a bid to end his assault on Ukraine. In an interview with Corriere della Sera, the pontiff suggested that NATO's expansion eastwards may have prompted the invasion. While His Holiness has avoided rebuking Putin or Moscow by name, he is also seeking to repair relations with the Russian Orthodox Church. The Kremlin has yet to respond. Hargu Dodo in southeastern Ethiopia has hardly had a drop of rain in 18 months. The United Nations says the conflict between government forces and the Tigray People's Liberation Front has left 9 million people in need of emergency food aid. The lack of rain has killed nearly 1.5 million head of livestock in what the OCHA are calling the worst drought to hit the Horn of Africa in decades. Pro-choice and anti-abortion activists continue to demonstrate in front of the U.S. Supreme Court after reports yesterday that justices were set to overturn a 1973 ruling legalizing abortion nationwide. Vice President Kamala Harris denounced the move, saying women's rights in America are under attack. Those Republican leaders who are trying to weaponize the use of the law against women Will we say, how dare they? How dare they tell a woman what she can do and cannot do with her own body? Republicans have welcomed the news but want an investigation into how the draft opinion was leaked, calling it an attempt to bully the court. For years, the radical left has attacked the institution of the Supreme Court. Top Democrats began publishing wild statements about what the court might decide packed with using unhinged rhetoric that could easily incite, light, a match. Public opinion has been inflamed since the draft opinion was leaked to reporters on Monday, but attention is also now turning to the identity and motivation of the person who passed on the highly confidential document. Both the left and the right have cast blame on each other. Euronews reporter Ray Suarez in Washington, D.C. says Monday's leak was a major blow to the court's authority. Part of the power of the Supreme Court in this country comes from its mysteriousness, from the inability of the public to read or in, uh, predict outcomes of cases until the court speaks. It's bound by tradition. It's bound by being removed from the day-to-day -day of nasty American politics. The court gave away a little bit of that mystery when it became a leaking institution, just like elected officials sometimes leak uh, confidential documents and, and reporters get their hands on them, in this case the website Politico, with the bombshell of this draft opinion. Now, the opinion is not final, the final vote is not known, but it looks like this is the strongest signal yet that Roe v. Wade, which has been at the heart of American conflict over politics in this country for half a century, is about to go down.